Hi friends, this is Temur. Welcome to my channel, The Cloud Security Guy, where we talk on a weekly basis about, you know, things like cloud security, artificial intelligence, and general cybersecurity advice. So the topic of this week's video is AWS Control, Control Tower Tutorial. Uh, and why is the best way? If you have, if you are like working in AWS and you have multiple accounts, so this is the best way to secure. So that's why we're doing an AWS Control Tower Tutorial uh, this week. Now, if you have worked in the cloud for even for a little while, you know how quickly this environment can increase in complexity, right? As more and more systems you migrate. And what happens is usually what I've seen is companies usually start with small non-critical systems, but they quickly want to migrate other systems. Once they see the cost benefits and the power they get from uh, cloud. And this can become like a big challenge for security teams. who have to put in controls to secure accounts and more and more accounts are getting created. So thankfully AWS, it's the market leader for many years, right? They regularly release new security services for its customers and AWS Control Tower is one of the recent ones. And as uh, I'm like a big fanboy of AWS Control Tower and how it can really help you simplify cloud governance. I made a video on cloud governance like a while back and I thought it would be a good idea to create this AWS Control Tower tutorial to simplify its concepts. So if you go through this, you will understand uh, how AWS Control Tower works and you should be able to deploy it easily. Okay. So let's get started. Before we get started fully, guys, uh, please do like and subscribe to this channel. It will really help the channel to grow and it will really help these videos to reach the maximum amount of people. So I would be really grateful if you do that. Just like, subscribe and comment if you can. Okay, so before we start, let's like start with the basics and we'll, let's start with a single AWS account. So what, what is an AWS account? When you create like a, when you get started in AWS, you'll get an account, right? An AWS account is like a boundary. It's like a container for all your resources. So it allows you to launch like EC2, VPC within your instances like uh, servers and networking, okay? And it also helps you to simplify billing because then you can uh, like, uh, what do you call, you can group your billing by the AWS accounts. And by default, the resources in an AWS account do not have access to resources outside the boundary. So it creates a segregation and you would, you don't they get this segregation on-prem. This is something which is usually only possible on the cloud. I mentioned this in my earlier video on PCI DSS also. Like when you want to segment something off, right? An AWS account can really give you a proper segmentation, which is not possible on prem. Okay. But what happens? Okay. So you have this AWS account, right? You have this AWS account and you have resources, but what happens? Uh, more and more accounts get created and customers usually start their journey with one account, but then they quickly want to create more accounts, right? And usually what happens is what I've seen is uh, customers usually have one account, a management account which is used to govern all the accounts and consolidate billing. Then you have a production account, which has all your main systems, your machine critical systems. Then you get like a sandbox where developers can play around with the new services and experiment, right? Then you have a security account, which is used by the cybersecurity team with access to the logs and like with other security services. Uh, then you have like a shared services account, which follows like a hub spoke model. So for services which are used across accounts, like storage of logs, networking, you know, like a hub spoke model. So this does become very, very complex and it, it, it becomes like a nightmare to manage it, right? So we had like a service called AWS organization. So sorry if this diagram looks complex, don't worry about it. But what happens is just to show you, it becomes very like complex. So AWS do have a service earlier, which is called AWS organizations. So what happens is like AWS organizations, it allows you to create OUs. If you were in Active Directory, right? You know, OUs, OUs are like folders and which you can enforce policies on that. So, it, but just to show you, it becomes like very challenging and security teams want to make sure they have controls, right? So they want developers to have admin access in the developer account, but they don't want to have admin access in the production account. So previously AWS organization, it was a great way to do this. And you could create OUs, like I mentioned, and group AWS accounts and apply rules to them. They're just like Active Directory. And AWS organization is still a very good tool. It's amazing, but it still requires a lot of manual work to accomplish which is where AWS Control Tower comes in and why I've made this AWS Control Tower tutorial, just to teach you guys, uh, because it's still relatively new. Okay, so what is AWS Control Tower? Simply put, it's like a new security offering which simplifies and automates governance controls. And most importantly, it provisions a ready-made multi-account AWS environment, already configured as per security best practices. Okay, so just that's a technical definition. Simply put, it's the quickest and the easiest way to set up and secure a multi-account AWS environment uh, It's usually called like a landing zone. That's that's the terminology used underneath the hood, like behind the scenes, it is still using AWS organizations, 
but what it does is it, it automates a lot of the processes and hides away the complexity okay so you don't need to worry about what's happening in the background it was built by aws based on their experience of securing thousands and thousands of customers right so they already know what customers want and they've done so that's why it's awesome they've made this service and with just a few clicks from the console you can create this environment that's the amazing thing about it so that's what i want to discuss today so what is uh, just uh, the features of aws control tower so what is it like i said earlier you, you'll get something called a landing zone a landing zone is a, like a pre-configured multi-account environment the whole thing that's already compliant with best practices you get guardrails what are guardrails guardrails are automated policy controls focusing on security and compliance right like uh, just to think about it you have pre preventative guardrails right so you can put those in that will stop deployment of resources that don't meet policies like aws cloud trail will already be enabled like logging will already be enabled in all the accounts or you can put in detective guardrails so like if s3 bucket is made public if one of your folders is made public to the whole world you can detect that and you can, you can alert for non-compliance and you can configure this so you'll already have those configured as per best practices right you'll get those ous i mentioned already there and something more awesome you'll get account factory which is like a, uh, it's like a area where you can launch new accounts and all those new accounts will already get configured with all these best practices that you've configured so you don't need to do it manually like you used to do with aws organizations you'll get a single sign-on and like you'll get a directory which is set up and you so you can have even if you have like 50 aws accounts you just need to use one id okay and lastly you'll get a management dashboard to see how well your accounts are complying with the guardrails that were put in place so it's pretty awesome you all of this you will get with just one click of a button okay and like so what happens like when you will see what happens but what happens when you deploy aws control tower what happens is basically like this diagram you can see so two uh, organizational units are created one is like called the security uh, ou and one is called the sandbox ou okay so uh, within the security ou you'll get two aws accounts you'll get a log archive account and you'll get an audit account the log archive is used for like centralized logging okay where you'll store everything and the security is for like auditing okay you'll get around 32 guardrails already configured okay and uh, i think it's 32 preventative and 30 are detective guardrails to prevent violation and you can keep growing this okay you'll get sso configured you'll get uh, account factory configured and you'll get a management account like i said the landing zone so just with the what the, already it'll get you configured like this and the sandbox ou this is where you can launch like new resources right okay you want to play around with the what you call uh, uh, AWS services, you can create your account within the sandbox you. Usually what people do is they start off like this and then they can grow based on the great practices which Control Tower has put in, you can then grow your AWS accounts uh, by using this uh, uh, like framework which is set up. And usually this is how it can, when you build on top of AWS Control Tower, like I said, you'll have a security OU, right? And then you can get sandbox or you, you can get suspended OUs, uh, policy staging, individual exceptions, all these sort of things. So what organization usually do, they create further AWS accounts and it becomes very easy to do. You'll get with AWS account factory, you can just literally with a click of a button, you can create more and more AWS accounts and security team will have that peace of mind that everything is already configured as per best practices. So these were like the concepts of AWS control tower. I hope you understood it, but let's look at what happens. So how do you start it? Uh, my apologies, guys. I already have AWS Control Tower configured within my environment. So I can't show you an actual live demo, but you can follow these steps. It's very easy to do. It's not that challenging. Uh, do take a look at it and let me know. So it's worth deploying it is quite simple. Just type in Control Tower in the above search box and you, you can go to the service page. And within here, you can click on Landing Zone, which is on the right side, upper life side, right side. All you have to do is click on uh, Set Up Landing Zone and the process will start. Okay. So the, this step will come up. Uh, you can usually make do with the default selections. No need to change anything now. If you're just trying to understand what it is, you can just go down and click next. Okay. Uh, this is what I mentioned, the default OUs, which will come up, right? Uh, you can change the name of the security and the sandbox OUs. Uh, I would not recommend doing it because it gets confusing. If you look at other tutorials, then you have different names. You won't be able to understand which OU is referring to. Just leave the defaults for now. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is where you'll get the, like I mentioned, it creates two accounts, right? The log archive account and the audit account. So what you need to do is uh, you need to create your e unique emails here. You need to mention, usually people put their security team's emails here and it just you make sure that both of them are unique. Okay, you can't reuse emails here. So just use that 
and uh, put those names there they will get emails okay so this is the last step guide so you will need to hear uh, in the step five when you click next scroll down and you'll see this screen click on the checkbox that you understand what aws control tower will do one point to keep in mind guys aws control tower is free you won't get charged for that but the services it deploys are not such as aws config cloud trail you know s3 simple notification service you will get charged based on what you use so keep that in mind if you're deploying it within a, what you call demo environment you might get charged based on the services that get uh, deployed once control tower starts spinning up okay so click on setup landing zone so yeah it, it'll start it takes around I, I think around 30 minutes usually it won't take that long but usually at 30 minutes so look out for emails for your management log archive and audit accounts uh you will get most importantly you will get an email like this which is for your sso this is it will say that your sso account has been set up just keep a note of that because uh, I, i've of course uh, sanitized it but you will get a url and that that's the url you will be using for signing it to your control tower make sure you get this email okay and yeah after a while yes you will get this this is the screen that your landing zone is now available so you it will tell you it is created to ous uh, it will get three shared accounts. One is your management account and the log archive and security audit account. And you'll or you'll get like a single sign-on already configured and 20 preventative guardrails to enforce policies and two detective guardrails, okay? And now you can, like I mentioned earlier, you can use your account factory to enroll more and more accounts. So this is all set up just with a few click of the buttons. All this thing has been set up. If you want, you can go to the left screen and check, click on OU. You'll see this is the route. You'll get the sandbox and the security accounts there. You are looking at it. So these are already configured, the OUs. You go to account factory. It's very easy to do. Just click on enroll account and you can put more and more accounts. So if you want to create a new account, you want to enroll existing accounts, this is the place to go to. Uh, guardrails, you can go there and these are the guardrails. The mandatory guardrails, you can't change. They have AWS puts these in because they don't want you messing around with the control tower functionality. So certain best practices you can't uh, change in, uh, in control tower and you shouldn't. But the other ones like the you can actually play around with and see which you want to make like preventative or detective if you want to just want to understand how it's happening and like i mentioned earlier you'll get the email from the single sign on right so make sure you click on that and this this will be your entry point so i hope now you understand guys why i like aws control tower so much and the benefits of it offers if you are a large enterprise customer who's going to be working on aws at scale then control tower is a great way to make sure environment has a secure foundation from day one it also gives business teams, you know, a great way to provision new AWS accounts quickly from account factory. And security teams have that peace of mind that accounts will be pre-configured with security best practices. Okay. As I mentioned many, many times before, security automation is one of the key benefits of the cloud. And control tower is one of the best services to implement it. So I hope you understand, guys. I hope this AWS control tower tutorial was uh, beneficial for you. And I wish you all the best of luck in your AWS control tower journey. Do If you like this video, please do like and subscribe and comment. So this channel and this video is able to reach the maximum amount of people. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.